Okay, I've got Tori Simpson um, on the line here. She's in Arizona. What part of Arizona are you in, Tori? I'm in Mesa, Arizona. It's um, probably 15 miles from Phoenix, I think. I'm not really sure to tell you the truth, but it's one of the one of the cities closest to Phoenix. Okay. Yeah. Well, you've got a story about Titus. Um, I don't know what it is, but I have a feeling it's going to be interesting. It is. Um, the influence that Titus has had on my life has been profound in, in quite, a, quite a few different ways. And um, it's also had influence in my son's life. I have a 28-year-old son who also watches him, but I'll, I'll focus on what, what Titus has um, highlighted for me as far as my walk with, with the Lord. Um, I'm just a non-denominational uh, Christian, and since, since about 2011, I've been trying to live a Christian lifestyle. And um, so I'm always searching the King James Version Bible for the truth. And Titus has really helped me with that, has helped me with my prayer life. Um, one of the main things that he's done uh, or influences that the Lord is, has worked through him to get to me is recently, I don't know if you saw the video where Titus is talking about um, a, a woman calling about her son who was on drugs and told Titus, Titus, please pray for my son. Yes. Okay, and Titus said, "I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paraphrase this because I don't know the exact words he said, but something like, um, something like, well, first of all, um, before you call me to pray for you, um, to the rest of the people, you know, that are going to want to prayer from Titus, is make sure that you're you're right with God." Yes. Point one. Point two, I know. Point two, make sure that you have, that you're right with your fellow man, your neighbor. So, um, after pondering that, because I have a lot of health issues and I want to be healed so that I can, you know, function. Who doesn't want to be healed? But I've waited for years to be healed. And so I pondered those two points, and I think I'm I'm pretty right with God in a lot of ways. I have a strong prayer and Bible study life. I mean, it could always be better, but for the past few years, I've had an issue with my neighbor next door. Um, I'm going to try to shorten this. She has a dog that I'm afraid of, and I have a short fence, so I'm always afraid that my dogs and her dog are going to fight. So I have avoided her and her dog for years, but she's not... We haven't been very nice to each other in the, in the during that time. So... Um, anyway, I was thinking, you know what, Lord, I'm not right with my neighbor. I'm so tired of it. And I want to be rid of the sin and I want to be, you know, I want to be healed. So, um, it just hit me one day. I saw her go inside her house when I came out and I thought, okay, this is it. I have her phone number. So I called her. I said, Jody, can I speak with you? And she came out, and she's she's not a Christian. She's pig, and she 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 worships pagan gods. And I just told her. I said she came right up on my fence, and I said, Jody, I accept you just as you are, and I want to ask your forgiveness for being such a bad neighbor. I want to be a better neighbor. I want us to mend our friendship, 
And if you, I said, Jody, how long has it been that we've been, you know, this way? And she said, it's been almost six years. I said, well, I'm tired. I said, please. She goes, I forgive you. And she goes, and I'm sorry as well. And this is a miracle, okay? This is a true miracle that I submit to God in this way. Because I'm pretty stubborn and I just I just trust God with whatever happens between my neighbor and I from here on out. And it's just when I told my friends and my son, he's and my brother, they were all like, You're kidding. You're kidding, you did? Really? What she said? They wanted to know the whole story. This was because of Titus's influence with the word, you know, and with in relation to healing. So I'm just I'm just overjoyed that that happened because I do not have energy to have any bad relations with anyone anymore. And I want to be healed. So that's one point. Um as far as with Titus. The second point was um, he brought up the scripture where Jesus was next to the thief on the cross. And the thief says, I want to, you know, how can I be with you? And he says, I tell you today, you'll be with me in paradise. Well, Titus explained that in Greek, there are no commas. So what that actually means, if I if I'm you know, correct me if I'm wrong, or maybe he can but I think he said that in Greek that actually meant that Christ was saying, I'm telling you this today. Not that not that they'll be in paradise today or go to heaven today. Because he explained, you know, where we go right after we die, how the process is. That changed my complete opinion of, of that because I've been taught by my pastor. Um, if you're absent in the body, you're present with the Lord, which I'm sure that has meaning and it has truth. But it's not the way we've interpreted it. And so Titus, after, oh goodness, it's probably 13 years I thought that way that we were... You know, the, not that we wait in, in the grave. We wait in the grave until the resurrection. So that was just eye-opening to me that Titus brought that up. Um, also, the, the phrase, once saved, always saved, Titus explained that. And I won't go into that because I can't really remember exactly what he said. But he kind of changed my opinions as far as that, or gave me something to really study and look up and, you know, ask the Lord about. Um, so he's, he's really helped my Bible study life. And he's super trans, he's super transparent. And I listen to the way he prays because I want to, I bind the enemy and his angels every time I, almost every time I pray now, which I think is really, really important. And he does that almost all the time. So I'm just really encouraged that my, my spiritual life, my walk with the Lord has increased recently because of his influence. And, um, you know, I don't know if there's, I don't know who's saying he's a cult leader. I, I don't even want to get into that. But that's just that can't be true. I really right. think. Yeah, it's. I really it's think, not even close. <laughs> no, no. And I've encouraged. I've told my son because my son has um, some issues with his walk with God. You know, like every twenty-eight year old male probably has sin in his life. And I said, if you ever want to go to to work with Titus, I would totally support that. Just you need to know what you're in for, you know. But um, 
So I, you know, I've told them that, but I'm just really happy to be able to tell you this because I think it's really important how much he's influencing people through the internet. So that's really about it, Aaron. Oh, that's really good, Tori. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm excited. When I tell my friends these things, they're like, oh, I'm going to look that up or, you know. I, because I never want to say I know the Bible completely or I'm real settled on everything. I won't debate it with anyone because it's just not my way to debate the Bible. But I'm learning new things all the time, as we all are, you know. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh. Holy Spirit is revealing new things all the time. So I'm just really grateful for Titus' influence in my life through the Lord. And um, I appreciate talking to you, Aaron. Oh, Tori, it's my pleasure. And I'm honored to be able to talk to you. And thank you for sticking up for Titus. Um, it's, you know, I'm, I'm the least in all of this, trust me. Um, I'm new at YouTube, I barely know what I'm doing. Uh, but, um, you know, I've been up there and I've seen so many things happen. Um, I've seen prayers answered. I've seen, um, you know, lives changed. And um, I, I just can't sit by and do nothing. Um, you know, my channel is new. I just started it about January 21st or so of this year. I, I've, I've been wanting to start a channel for years. Just never, just never got off my rear end and did it. And so I, I finally started my channel and, you know, all this stuff is going on with Titus. So I kept thinking, I've got to do something to my channel for Titus. You know, right. he, he's just the best. He, he's, he is just so great. He is. I agree. Oh, one more thing. I have a, you, do you remember hearing um, Titus talk about his, his dog that, he asked God to heal. He had the, his dog had a tumor. Did you hear that? I'm not sure, to be honest. Maybe. I don't remember. Okay, there's so much. Yeah. I understand. I heard him say recently that, um, that his dog had a tumor and he asked God to heal his dog. And the tumor shrunk and his dog has lived for four more years. So I have a chick, a sick little elderly chihuahua that I've been praying, and God answers. He will help her. God helps my my little dog. Who's who? When I see her suffering, I'll be like, Lord Jesus, please have mercy, you know. And he does. It's it's miraculous. So she's not healed. She's an older dog. I don't. Whatever God's will is, you know, I, I'm okay with. But it just, it just never ceases to, to amaze me. So, Tori, um, are you aware that from time to time when I'm at Titus's, I'll answer his phone for him? No. I don't even, I haven't even looked up Titus's address or phone number. I, I just don't even want to, I know he's so busy and everything. Yeah. But no, really, are you out? I've been watching your videos like yesterday. Are you there now? No, I came back on Sunday. This was my sixth time up there, and I've spent a total of 31 nights up there since October. Wow. Yeah, I watch your videos, and I, I like the way that they're not edited. They're just off the cuff and whatever's on your heart and walking your dogs and stuff. I think that's great. Well, I appreciate that. I'm, I, you know, there there is a gritty, authentic aspect to it. You know, absolutely. Like yeah. just just calling you up, and I was just like, I need to call her, and just doing it without <laughs> planning. It's it is really the best way to go because, um, if nothing else, I'm I'm really hoping and praying that the officials in this case that uh, is involved with. Jeffrey and Stephanie now, you know, tangentially somehow Titus is now involved in this case. I'm hoping that they'll see these videos because how can they not 
it, you know, how can they not be curious? I'm hoping they'll see these videos and they'll see the, the authentic nature of this material. You can't, you can't script this stuff up and have it, no. you know, have it be authentic. It, it would be fake. Um, it's like I'm a character witness for Titus. That's right. Yeah. Well, so I was up there for the first time. I arrived on the end, at the end of the day, on groundbreaking day, October 4th, 2023. And I stayed up there about two weeks. I don't know, 12, 12 nights, something like that. All together, I think. I'd have to look. I've got it all written down. And um, I kept noticing that the phone was ringing off the hook out there in his telephone shack. And, you know, it just seemed wrong to me that nobody would answer it. And, of course, you know, we had 15, you know, 16, 17 or whatever guys, maybe even 20 people there. I don't remember. There were a bunch of people there at the peak. And there was just so much, you know, I don't want to say chaos, but it was kind of chaotic. Um, so Titus couldn't answer the phone. Right. So I asked Titus, I was like, hey, you know, if the phone rings and I'm walking by, can I just answer the phone? And he's like, yes, of course. And I'm thinking, it's funny because with Titus, he kind of, he, you kind of expect him to say that, but you also, you definitely want to ask because it's like a big responsibility. And I take it very seriously. Right. Like, honestly, if I'm doing something and I hear the phone ringing, I'll usually drop it. I'm doing a run and go answer the phone. And I think people probably think I'm silly, you know, like not Titus, I don't think, but I wonder, you know, because even some of the volunteers, I don't know if they don't feel like called to do it, but the, I, I'll just drop what I'm doing and literally run because I don't want to miss the call. Like you just never know. So this is where right. I'm going with it. The very first call I took was a lady in um, the LA area, Rika, Rika Marginian. And the, you know, God lined it up. She was having the, um, she was having a really hard time. Her dog Milo was about to pass away and she was really struggling with it and she was just weeping i think she called okay i had i'm trying to remember the chronology of this it may not have been the first call it may not have been the first call but i think it was the first time i had like a real you know situation where you know right. like what was really important and i think i had been on the phone before i, I just can't remember now um, you know, because people called, people called, and, and, you know, usually it was just, you know, they were wanting to talk to Titus, and it was no big deal. But she called, and she was weeping. And I, I, I remember saying to myself, all right, I was on the phone much longer than I wanted to be, and I was like, that's it. I'm going to brush my teeth. I'm going to go to my tent. And I, I and, and then the, and then the, literally, I got off the phone, brushed my teeth, and I was going to my tent, and the phone rang. And, of course, I went and answered it, and it was Rika. And her dog was dying. And little Milo was just old and ha having a real hard time. I don't remember what was going on with them specifically, but he was just having the hardest time. And I think I stayed with her on the phone for an hour, and if not hour and a half. And it was just so good for both of us. And right. and you know you know what? Like I haven't talked to her for a couple of weeks. I don't think. Or as far as a text message or whatever, but I think Milo's been doing well, you know, well enough. He he's getting by, and he can't go on forever, you know. Yeah. But I, uh, I told this to Rika, and I believe this is the case. I I really believe it's like dogs are a gift from God. You can you can accept the gift or you can reject it, but I really believe that dogs are sent. Like that specific dog was meant for me. Right. I really do. Because every, every dog is different. I go to the dog park. I've been taking Archie to the dog park for seven years now. I've had him for seven years. And I study dogs. They're all different. Every single dog is like a person. They're all completely different. I've never seen two dogs that are exactly alike. Right. And, and so, you know, it just makes sense. It's kind of like a snowflake. They're all different. Um, more or less, I, I'm hearing that's a whole other topic. I'm hearing that there are, they, they found like a second snowflake that, you know, was, was not, that's probably just man making up something, but I, di I digress. But, um, I really think that dogs are made for people. I just do. They are. They're so loyal. They teach us how to be better people in some ways. I think, I think so. 
they're just so loyal. I've had my little chihuahua for, well, she's 10. She's a big chihuahua, actually. She's 10 pounds. And I've had her for 13 years. And she is just my little companion. I live by myself. And it, God, I really feel like God gave her to me. I really do. That's and he's given, me, he's given me 10 months since she was initially diagnosed with congestive heart failure. So I'm grateful for that. If he took her today, I, I know he would comfort me. I know, I know Holy Spirit would comfort my heart, but it would be a huge loss to me, you know, not having her. So, I know. Sorry, I just, I'm scrolling through photographs here, and I, I was going through all these photos from Titus's, and I came upon one that was not from Titus's, and the <laughs> The people, the people who get it are going to be, they're going to really laugh, I think, because it's, it's just like a random photo. Um, but the people who don't get it will be like, what's that all about? Um, what is it? Well, do you know the movie Red Dawn? No. Okay. Well, it's a, it's a very worldly thing. But um, Red Dawn was a movie that came out, I believe, in 1985. And it, it was about, for lack of a better term, like... Uh, Things went really bad, and um, the United States got invaded by by Russians. And uh, we we watched it because there was a lot going on um, back in October. Like Israel had just gotten invaded, and um, we so it, so I went to Titus's. I went. I arrived at Titus's on Wednesday of the Feast of Tabernacles week, and. I, like, I don't know, the next day or two days later, Israel got, um, I don't want to say invaded, but that ter terrorist attack happened with the uh, the gliders or whatever you call it. Remember the glider attack at the concert? Right. That, that's right. when all this took off. Was was and it, it all happened while we were up there. So, anyways, we came back from Titus's and we watched Red Dawn and, you know, it was kind of, just kind of a funny photo, but... You'll see it in the video, I think, and you'll you'll get a laugh out of it. Well, we came back. I think we were here for a day or two, and we just went back to Titus's. We were up there for, I don't know, a week, and we went and stayed another week. And I didn't wow. even tell Titus we were coming. We just showed up, and he was like, wait a minute. Like, didn't you just leave, like, a day or two ago? <laughs> but it, it was so good up there. It was so good. That's nice. You know, we, That's awesome. I, I'm looking through photos and there are people that have fallen away, you know, for lack of a better term. And I'm seeing photos of some of these people who have fallen away and some of them are still, you know, um, loyal or friendly or whatever. But um, it's it's kind of it's kind of sad and maybe a little bit scary, but just the way it is, like, you know, the devil will sow tears, in, you know, in with the crops. Oh yeah, and it's just, it's just the way it is. I'm I'm sure this has been going on forever, for lack of a better term. And it's not. Oh yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it in my first church that I went to. It fell apart. There's just the devil is divisive. He'll he'll do anything he can to break up things. I've seen it in families where you know. I mean, it's we all know that it's spiritual or any kind of. Almost any kind of conflict is a spiritual war. Yeah. Addiction is spiritual war. That's right. I, I just isn't afraid to even, you know, mention those things that are uncomfortable to talk about. But they need to be talked about. There needs to be light brought into it. Sexual addiction is powerful, destructive addiction. Breaks up marriages and families, and it invites the it invites the enemy in your home. If you have child, or, yeah, child, high school child or whatever, watching that kind of stuff, it invites the devil in your home. That's right. So, yeah, I'm glad he's not afraid to mention that. No, it's one of the things that really resonated with me. You know, was his honesty with his own, you know, um, confession. Right. 
and the fact that he was just that honest because I, I feel like there's a lot of sin that's covered up and there's a lot of sin that churches won't talk about and pastors won't admit that they've done and and you know it, it, it's leading into a big satanic trap um, because right. I feel like they're really generally speaking I, I feel like we kind of um, how can I put this I want I want to choose my words carefully I feel like we we like miscategorize. Um, and we like miss, um, we overemphasize certain sins and it, and it's the devil's milking that for all it's worth. If that makes any sense, like right now, you know, right. Yes. Yes. I completely agree. Um, yeah, it's when someone's been over a sin, an addiction or whatever for, 20 in some years, it's like you need to know when it's okay to talk about it because we don't need to bring up our old stuff because we are new, we are new creatures, you know, we are new creatures, but if it's going to help somebody with their addiction, then it's, it's valuable to say, you know, I have 23 years sober. Yes. And that's because the, the Lord broke those chains off of me. It's not because of what I did as much as what he did. So, yeah. I'm watching an image right now of Titus. Um, he's uh, knocking down the tree of sin, <laughs> I guess, is what you might say. Um, but uh, he was using a, a homemade wedge he made. And I'm just scrolling through my phone in this video just, just so I can give like a some sort of a visual, um, something, something to make the, the video, I guess, a little more stimulating for people who want something to see. But, uh, anyway, Ooh. he does, he uses a lot of analogy. He makes, he makes the Bible come alive for me when they talk about how I can't even, I can't even think of a story, but well, like what they're talking about now with, um, uh, is it Joseph with a coat of many colors that was was hated by his brothers and all that? They yeah. when they discuss all that and how things must have been back then, it really brings the Bible alive for me for many people. I'm sure. Yeah, it's, it's good. It is. It's it's really good to listen to, and also he's made me contemplate because I've had a friend that that. Uh, that uh, celebrate Sabbath on Saturday that was trying to tell me, you know, why or it is in the Bible. And I said, well, I don't know what to tell you. My church celebrates on Sunday and I'm not going to, you know, I can't change churches. This is my, this is where God wants me. And, but it, it, Titus has really illuminated that for me too, as far as, you know, God wants us to, to value that day, to recognize the day that he said. So that's something I'm pondering as to where what I'm going to do going forward. You know, things have changed. Um, and I haven't been to my church since before COVID because of my health issues. I have to be careful around crowds. So we'll just see, you know. I'm letting the Lord lead me. I don't idolize Titus. I admire right. him. I think he's a good Christian man. Right. But I don't want anybody to get the wrong impression that I idolize him. Right. Um, yeah, we shouldn't do that, you know. So, but yeah, I'm just really grateful that his videos have come in my life. And and I'll send him over to my son. I'll be like, this one was great. Totally applicable to what our, we're going through in our life, you know. So um, it's just really encouraging. Really has helped me a lot. Well, that's really good. Tori, this is really good. I, I really appreciate your time and your, uh, your, uh, your witness, so to speak. This is good stuff. Great. Thank you. I'm glad. I think so. I've been excited about it. So tell Titus hello for me. Give yeah. him a hug for me. 
Yeah, well, you should definitely call him and leave him a voicemail. Um, you know, he he's busy, but if you leave him a voicemail, it might take him a week or two. He'll eventually call you back. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't want to bother. There's nothing. Everything is fine here. But if you if you send me over his number, if I needed to, I would. Sure. So. But I don't want to disturb him. I wouldn't mind having his address and phone number to send him a card or a gift. But, um, yeah, so if you think about that, just send that on over to me. Text it to me. Please. Oh, yeah, sure. That's that's easy. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. So, but thank you so much for calling me back because I'm all excited again about telling you and knowing that you're going to tell him. And... Yeah, Titus has been, um, you know, he he's thanked me, I don't even know how many times, he's thanked me so much for supporting him and kind of having his back and being willing to, you know, for lack of a better term, stick my head out or, you know, my neck out or just get involved or whatever. Right. You're you know. just partnering with him in the Lord. You're standing in the gap, you know. Yes. Well, you know, he's my brother, you know, and oh, I, yeah. can't, I can't help but, but get involved. It's just, it would be wrong, to me, it'd be wrong not to, because I know too much. I've seen too much. Right. I, 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 I can't, I can't not help him if I can help him. So. Right. Yeah. I understand. That's great. Awesome. These people who are watching the video, um, they're g probably going to get tickled at some of the videos that I'm, I'm scrolling through. I'm scrolling through like photos and videos and um, the GoPro, you know, it it's good for certain things. Like I think Peter shot, Peter Santanello shot the video, the man with no legal identity with a GoPro. Yeah. And, but it's not good for like up close and unfortunately, you know, that's all I can do right now. I've got it like real up close, like just three inches from my my phone screen and I'm going through my phone screen and I'm just showing these photos and they're real blurry, you know, for lack of a term, they're mostly, they're mostly blurry, but, um, right. anyway, but you, you can, when you did the shot of Titus rescuing the cat in the tree, I thought, wow, that's a great picture. Oh yeah. 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 Sure. It, it's, it's definitely good for some things. Um, yeah, but, but what, I'm, what I'm doing right now, it's not, it's blurry, but that's okay. You can still see, you can see what's going on. Yeah. Again, it, it's, hey, it's authentic, you know, you can't, you can't say it's not authentic. It's so bad. It's so bad that, you know, the, the production quality is so bad, it, it has to be authentic. Right. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, I'll, I'll look forward to seeing that. Yes. That's exciting. Well, okay. Well, Tori, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to end the video right here.